Yesterday, Congress passed the 5,593-page coronavirus stimulus package, which President Trump will probably have to sign, otherwise he'll be blamed for ruining millions of Americans' Christmases by stopping their stimulus check from coming. The Democrats waited until after the election and just days before Christmas to pass it in order to cause as much pain for President Trump as possible. But it wasn't just a coronavirus stimulus package. They had to attach it to another ginormous generic spending bill that is guaranteed to put America closer to bankruptcy because, hey, what's another $2.3 trillion in debt? And while Americans who aren't allowed to go to work anymore or are allowed to open their businesses are getting a measly $600. The bill includes $10 million to Pakistan, specifically for gender programs, $169 million to Vietnam, almost $200 million to Bangladesh, $130 million to Nepal, $15 million to Sri Lanka, and the list goes on and on. There's even a provision in here declaring that Tibet has the right to decide how the Dalai Lama's soul is reincarnated and that China and other countries should not be allowed to interfere in that. And no, this is not a joke. It also makes various changes to U.S. copyright law, among other things, proposing up to 10 years in prison for people who are illegally streaming content, which means that if you restream a CNN presidential debate on your YouTube channel or other platform. And while millions of Americans are struggling to pay their bills because of the lockdowns and the layoffs, the New York Times says that this stimulus package is, quote, good enough. Good enough for the gender studies program in Pakistan, at least. I'm sure they're happy. The silver lining of the lockdowns, however, is that 75% of Hollywood Boulevard has been boarded up, so it's not all bad. In other news, old Joe got his vaccine on Monday while wearing not one, but two masks because we all know how much he loves them and... I bet I know what his grandkids are getting for Christmas this year. And there's some strange controversy about who should get the vaccine first. Normal people think that senior citizens should get it, especially those living in nursing homes, while Democrats think that it should be people of color. That's not a joke, by the way. They're saying that senior citizens have a higher percentage of white people in that age group and that the reason that they got there is because they benefited from white privilege and now it's time to help the people of color instead. A lot of people are concerned about any possible long-term side effects from this new mRNA technology and to instill confidence in the vaccine, the Pfizer CEO hasn't taken it yet. Mike Pence took his the other day, but so far President Trump hasn't gotten his, and so of course Democrats are complaining about that, saying that he's not instilling confidence in the safety of the vaccine, but of course if he did take it, then they would complain about that too, saying that he cut in line ahead of the healthcare workers and senior citizens and nursing homes. And I was wondering who the first celebrity would be to take a selfie getting the vaccine to show how cool they are, and now we know it was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's considered an essential worker, so she got to the head of the line because Lord knows what we would do without her. Tulsi Gabbard is upset about this and posted this video. Heartless, arrogant, unelected CDC bureaucrats have decided that the lives of elderly Americans just don't count. Now for months the CDC has been telling us that the elderly are the most vulnerable. But now they are recommending that 100 million so-called essential workers which means healthy people working at everything from liquor stores to telephone companies, that they can get the vaccine before our grandparents can. While he's thankfully not a member of Congress, Andrew Yang can't wait to get his and thinks that everyone who does should get a barcode on their phone and then have to scan that in order to get into bars, restaurants, concerts, or get on an airplane. Heck, why not just implant an RFID chip in their hand and not let them buy or sell anything without it? And in case you're wondering, Santa Claus has taken the vaccine and Dr. Fauci gave it to him personally. Good one, Abby. Um, and Elmo's back for something else that I think is on a lot of kids' minds. Elmo's friend has a question about Santa Claus. How did Santa get the vaccine? And is it safe for him to go in the house? Well, I have to say I took care of that for you because I was worried that you'd all be upset. So what I did a little while ago, I took a trip up there to the North Pole. I went there and I vaccinated Santa Claus myself. I measured his level of immunity and he is good to go. You're such a hero, doctor, but sorry, kids. Santa can't bring you any toys this year because the government shut down his workshop saying that it was going to help slow the spread. Maybe next year. While Santa's stuck at home in the North Pole, someone who is traveling, however, is Dr. Fauci's sidekick, Dr. Burks who was caught traveling to one of her family's numerous homes Thanksgiving weekend 
where she met up with numerous different family members from numerous different households. And I'm sure that we'll see more Democrat mayors and governors getting busted this week traveling for Christmas because their lockdown rules only apply to us little people. And to really put things into perspective, members of Congress have continued to get paid throughout this entire lockdown and get about $175,000 a year, which is about $15,000 a month, which is about 24 times the size of that $600 stimulus check that you're going to be getting. But thank you, Nancy Pelosi, for helping to feed our families. Thanks so much thank for joining us. Thank you for your us. sensitivity to our constituents' needs. I am sensitive to them because I see them on the street begging for food begging for money. Madam Speaker, thank you, you so much. Have you fed them? We feed them. We we'll, feed them. We'll continue this conversation down the road for sure. <laughs>